Hi, Pastor Buddy. And Sister Ann Wimberly. From Lanny Road Baptist Church. We're welcoming you to our online broadcast. We're a fundamental King James Bible-believing church that loves Jesus Christ and one another. We're located at 5998 Lanny Road on the extreme north side of Jacksonville, but we would love to have you visit one of our services in person. Our regular services are 11 a.m. on Sunday and 6 p.m. on Sunday, and then Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, we thank you for tuning in today. Uh, so now let's go join one of our live services that's already in progress. Please well, take your songbook, turn over to page 199. I'm going to get y'all to stand and help me sing just a little talk with Jesus. That's uh, eight. Hey. Turned right to it. Yeah, who won this time? <laughs> That's cheating when it's me doing it, because I ain't got but a few songs. You won't ever get it when Brother Mike's doing it. Thank you. Songbook, turn over to page 113. When I see the blood. Let's see.
praise reports in the house this evening. Anybody want to say anything for the Lord? I want to thank the Lord for a beautiful, wonderful, <laughs> spirit-filled day that I had today. I have not had a day like that, and I don't know when. Well, matter of fact, it was the following Sunday, so I don't know what's going on in my life right now, but I can tell you this. Praise God. I praise God every day right now that for what he's doing in my life. Amen. Thank Amen. you, brother. Amen. Me too, by the way. I want to join that one. Oh, yeah, brother. Brother, we're going to thank God for all the soldiers that we have and the gifts and freedom that we've got. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you to all their servers. Today is Veterans Day. Thank you to all the veterans out there. Uh, we appreciate your service. Amen. That's right. Amen. Anybody else? Go ahead, brother. You a visitor? Yeah. Just my first time. I've got to give glory to God put me in this place my worship I, I, I got to give glory to the Father for letting me so all the way a bubber to jump she is, I found out a hoarder and uh, I've been blessed out of don't have that much clean anymore which is good as I that's been a true blessing and uh, my work it's a lot of work. You got it sometimes. And uh Amen. Amen. Good hand. I've been Why blessed. Don't you joke? Amen. Amen. We had. Amen. Or she had. <laughs> I still got mine. <laughs> 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 now we know the truth. Right. Uh, anybody else? I do. Um I just want to thank the Lord for uh, Stuart's having surgery tomorrow, and he's been in so much pain for so long, so I'm hoping this surgery, this is his fifth back surgery. Wow. So I'm hoping that this one will finally end the pain. So just also keep him in your prayers. Yeah, we need to hold him up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, if you would, take your song book, turn over to page 77. We're going to sing Higher Ground. That's what we're going to need to be on tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. Amen.
And if you would, take your song book, turn over to page 295. Jesus paid it all. Let's uh, see.
job. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. We'll sing that one more time just like that. God is so good. God. I don't know if we recognize it every single day. But God is so good. He's so good to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He is so good to us, man. I'm thinking, of, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking about we oftentimes go through an entire day. Sometimes we go through an entire week. I know people that have gone through their whole life and they've never give recognition to God for the good. And God is so good. The Bible tells us that all good gifts comes down from the Father of lights in, in whom there is no variableness of turning. There's no shadow of turning in Him whatsoever. Every good thing. Every good thing. Every good thing. It it doesn't matter whether you're a a child of God or you're just a creation of God. Every good thing in your life come down from the Father of lights. He's an amazing God. God bless you. Good to see you all tonight. Thank you all for making it also. Hallelujah. Listen, tonight um, I got something I want to share with you about Brother TJ's and I have been talking a little bit this week and um, and, uh, he's... um, God's been, as he said in his testimony already, God's been doing a work in his life. And I pray that everybody gets to have that experience, but I pray you get to have it without cancer. Amen. I pray you get to have it without some other tragedy. 
without, without some type of a fall or a failure or, or uh, you know, a, a sinful event in your life. I pray you get to experience God just because you said, Lord, I want some of that. Amen. I, and so this is what happened, Brother TJ, come to the house today. And uh, he said, Brother Buddy, he said, I've been uh, in some of my devotionals that I do. And he said, this one spoke to me. And he said, in the situation that I'm in, he said, it really spoke to my heart. And he said, I know others are also going through their own situations. Yours might not have been a diagnosis of a terminal disease or a, a very deadly disease, but yours might have been uh, something else that just was just as devastating to you uh, at the moment that you heard it. And I want you to listen. Uh, this is a devotional. Uh, if you're in Brother Dave's class, you're used to getting these. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Um, so, out of Psalm, the tenth Psalm. Now, remember when we talk about Psalms, we don't say Psalm chapter ten. It's not that. Uh, the book of Psalms is a book of Psalms. It's not a book of chapter of Psalms. It's a book of different Psalms. Each, each particular one is individual. So the 10th Psalm says in verse 1, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? Or why does it seem like I can't see you when I need you? And here's the devotion. In Psalms 46, 1, it says, God is a very present help in trouble. Amen. He allows trouble to pursue us as though he were indifferent to its overwhelming pressure. The reason he does that is so we may be brought to the end of ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I could read that to you again in case you didn't get that. But you need to make sure that you know that it's not your strength that's going to get you through. Amen. Now, through the trial, we're led to discover the treasure of darkness and the immeasurable wealth of tribulation. Yes, you heard me correctly. Listen, through the trial, we are led to discover the treasure of darkness, not light, and the immeasurable wealth of tribulation, not blessings. Listen for a second. We may be sure that He who allows the suffering is with us throughout the whole thing. Amen. It may be that we may only see Him once the ordeal is nearly past. Mm. But we must dare to believe, you must choose to believe that He never leaves our trial. That's right. Our eyes, our eyes may be blinded so that we cannot see the one that our soul loves. And the darkness and our bandages blind us so that we cannot um, see the form of our high priest. Yet he is there and he is deeply touched. Let us not rely on our feelings, Amen. but trust in his unswerving faithfulness. And though we cannot see him, let us talk to him. Although his presence may be veiled or covered or hidden or shadowed, once we begin to speak to Jesus as if he were literally present, an answering voice comes to show us that he is in the shadow keeping watch over his own. Your Father is as close to you when you journey, listen, your Father is as close to you when you journey through the darkest tunnel as He is when you are underneath the open heavens. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? It's a little poem that goes with it, part of a song, I believe. Although the path be all unknown, although the way be drear, its shadows I travel not alone in, when steps of yours are near. And it's an incredible blessing, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share that with you tonight as God has dealt with my heart uh, concerning our walk. This past weekend, Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, we spoke about what? Anybody remember? 
Meat. Spiritual meat, right? We did meat one and two. <laughs> my, one of my favorite subjects, by the way. Um, but it was a different type of meat. It was talking about spiritual meat. And we were looking at growing in the Lord and the idea of the essence of coming to a place of, of having a relationship with Christ that is, uh, that is kind of otherworldly. And I want to continue that just a little bit here. I'm going to take you to another very familiar scripture I believe that you'll recognize pretty quickly. Uh, out of the book of Luke, it's just one verse, so it's a very short sermon tonight. Luke 6, 45, and uh, I got this from that uh, Capital One commercial that says, what's in, what's in your wallet? What's in your heart? And I, <laughs> and I, and I thought about this because this scripture is, is, is teaching, I, we're going to look at this one verse and then we're going to talk about it in its context, how it fits into uh, the rest of the surrounding uh, teaching that Jesus was doing. And so as we look at Luke chapter 6, verse number 45, are you all with me? Amen. Our Lord said this, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. good. That sounds pretty logical. Man, us guys like logical things. So that, man, that fell right in line. You got, you, you, you got a good man, he's got good treasure in his heart, and he brings forth out of there that which is good. And the next part of that verse says, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. Also makes sense to me. And here is the conclusion or the, uh, the, um, the common ground of what makes both of these equations work. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. His mouth who? Him. Him who? Which one? Both. Both. For of the abundance of the heart of the good man who has good treasure, which means he has an, um, uh, an, an overwhelming deposited wealth, a surplus. There is good that overflows within him that's been deposited there, by the way, that that man out of the superabundance of his heart, he from his mouth these overflows come out. Just comes out. Do you know good people who do good things sometimes they ain't know they did good things. They just, they just do good. It's not, it don't seem to be a big deal for them. I've met folks and whenever they, when they give you a stick of gum you thought they gave you a kidney. Yeah. Thought you owed them their life or uh, your life or something because of a transplant or something. They, they, they thought the smallest deed was something and the reason it was such a big deal for them is because there's, there's not a super abundance of good in them. They've actually got to manufacture that. If we looked at the uh, context of the Scripture, Jesus was teaching that you can judge a tree yeah, by, its <laughs> by its fruit. And he goes on to talk about men. This is one of those uh, I guess common sense moments for Jesus. He says, men don't gather figs of thorns. Nope. They don't go to a thorn bush looking for, th for, th for figs. For figs. <laughs> he said, ne neither do they find grapes on thistles or just bramble bushes. You, you, you go to a grapevine, right? right? And so, but you might would find where somebody tried to fool you and maybe they stuck a fig onto some thorn somewhere or maybe they hung a cluster of grapes into a bramble bush somewhere and said, yeah, here, I'm a grapevine. <laughs> They'd be very, very proud of that cluster of grapes. You know why? Because they can't produce that. Amen. It's not within them to provide that. So, Jesus says in this verse, as he's in the context of talking about what's in a person comes out of a person, I'm going to just share a couple things with you. Like I said, I'm not going to keep you till next week. We talk about, we talk about when you get squeezed, what's in you comes out. That's right. I, I thought, man, brother, if I was, if I was the kind of guy that did illustrative preaching, 
You know what that is. That's illustrative preaching means you got some kind of a prop, and you, you want to talk about something, you bring it in, and you show them here, this is, and then you make reference from that and draw it to your, your, your lesson. If I was illustrative, I would say, if I'm going to talk about what's in you would come out, I would love to brought up here a two, piece of two by six about this long with a couple of nails in it and let you try to drive that nail. When you hit your thumb, then you'll know. <laughs> Am I right? Bring out the fruit. Have you ever, don't, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't look at nobody. But you've been, you've been in a situation where you got squeezed. Amen. Yep. Something popped out of you. Traffic mm. Bramble bush. Mm. Something popped out of you and you went like, well, they made me do it. <laughs> they made me do it. it. What does Jesus say? <laughs> Jesus says it's out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. The reason it got squeezed out is because it was already kind of overflowing up inside. Isn't it amazing how we can live Christian lives when we walk through that door? We fight like cats and dogs when we get back in the car. Like cats and dogs on, the way here. on the way to the church. <laughs> Call a peace treaty. That's right. Let's go into church and act saved. We get into the church. We act saved. We get back in the car. We're back to it. The poison that we bring out, <laughs> not just at one another. Maybe we wasn't fussing with each other. Maybe we was talking about, I can't believe we have church on Wednesday night when there's a storm coming. That preacher must be crazy. Expects me to get out, and you can't hardly see where you're going. Right? I think, I, think it's, I think it's absolutely silly because I know sister so-and-so didn't, uh, didn't arrange the flowers correctly at church. I get sick and tired of sitting there looking at that same thing over and over again. If I was in charge. Come on, preach. I met a pastor. I, I met an ex I met an ex pastor this just today's Wednesday, two days ago. I, I thought he was a pastor. So I said, hey brother, how's church going? He said, come here. I went, oh Lord. That ain't never a good sign when a preacher wants to talk in private to another preacher. Come on. So I sat down. He said, I ain't pastor no more. I said, what in the world? He said, they were fighting over the, who had the authority to put what kind of flowers in the bathroom for a funeral. Oh, my what? I said, really? He said, I ain't talking about days just arguing. He said, I thought I was going to call the law. <laughs> over flowers? He said, yeah. He said, but it's, he said, it ain't just that. He said, there's underlying issues. He said, every time we have any kind of meeting, he said, you could cut the tension with a knife. He said, it's thick. There's something in the hearts of the individuals that their mouth, as they're in the church, they may be able to hide it temporarily. Squeeze one of them even when they're in the pew. And they'll spread it all over the place. There's been knock out, knock down, drag outs inside church houses. Do you think that happened just on a whim? Nope. Came up on a uh -uh. sudden? Nope. Somebody had been toting something around. Yeah. A bunch of somebody's probably been toting something in their heart. Now listen, I'm talking to you tonight as believers in Christ. I'm not trying to say that the, the folks that have bad stuff in their heart are, are lost and the people got good stuff in their heart are, are saved. What I'm trying to say to you, you can be born again and you still ain't got rid of the old stuff. Do you know that Romans chapter number 7, Paul said this. He said, the things that I would do, I don't do. Yeah. Amen. And the things that I wouldn't do, I find myself doing. He said, oh my goodness. I'm trapped in this body of death. Who's going to deliver me? And then he, he finally discovers that it's by grace. It's by grace that he has a standing with God. And he recognizes that this old flesh has to be put to death. How often? Daily. Daily. Every day. Had to put it down. I can tell you that tonight you can make a decision to this altar. Lord, I'm going to walk according to your word. And tomorrow, before you get to work. Come on. You're going to be faced something that's going to give you a test to see if you rent what you're saying. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to make that commitment all over again. When you get up in the morning, 
You're going to have to make that commitment all over again. You need that reformation. You need that reaffirmation is the word I was looking for. You need to have that, re you need to be reassuring it all the time. Listen to Christian life. Don't just come because you sat down, uh, came down and said a prayer. Amen. I was talking to Brother Jimmy Fraley earlier this afternoon and he was reminding me, Brother Buddy, this time is different, didn't you Jimmy? This time is different. Amen. I've done it before. This time is different. Why? Because I'm going to put the effort into it. I know that it's not just me going down and saying some words. I know this time I got to put some feet to the prayers. This time I got to put some action to the Jackson, you know? I got to get it going. I got to take care of what I say that I believe. You know, action Jackson. Uh, but, uh, I got to take care of what I believe and I've got to feel, listen, what's the secret of a good man when he's squeezed and good things come out of him? He's got to be filled with a super abundance of good stuff. That's right, and that's the Lord. Man, come on. screw the funnel into the top of you and say, Lord, fill it up Amen. every day. Fill it up. And then when you get squeezed, you hit that thumb with that hammer, you'll say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank God it's still there. And I thank God I can feel the throbbing in that thing every time it squirts blood out because I know I'm still alive. And it'll remind me to move it next time before I strike that nail. They always told me with that hammer, Charlie, you know, Charles, you know this, right? You got to hit the one that don't got the meat on it. <laughs> hit the other nail. And the, the essence of this Christian life where you simply speak out good things, it might look like a, you might think, Brother Buddy, you're talking simplistic tonight. Listen to me. Yes, it's simplistic. It'll happen in your everyday walk. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to be able to put this to work tomorrow. <laughs> maybe, as somebody said tonight, maybe by the time you get home. But you're going to be able to put this to work. And, and you're going to find out, you're going to get squeezed. There's something going to push your button. And when that happens, you're going to see what comes out. And when it comes out, our tendency is to say, Frank made me do it. Yep. It's his fault or whoever it was. Might have been Richard. Somebody made me do it. I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have went there if he hadn't done what he did. Yeah. Right? Can't blame but the truth is, That's right. can't blame I can't blame anybody else for what I do. You were already there. Yeah, I was already there. It was in me, Frank. I carried it with me. Right. Quick draw McGraw. Man, I was ready to go. So I look walking around with a chip just waiting for somebody to knock it off. And you're ready to go. Yeah, you maybe don't recognize yourself as that way, but you may even right now say, Pastor, I'm, I'm ticked at you. Shut up and let's go home. You might be filled with venom. Yeah. Filled with venom. And you don't even know why. But all the while, the poison's been building inside of you. And we're talking about a very simplistic type of a technique, and the idea is that what's in you comes out, and we say, we all understand that, can we move on? Well, the, the reason we can't go on somewhere is because if that is the rule, and that's the principle, then how do we fix it? We must fill ourselves with the good. Amen. Before you can fill yourself with the good, though, i got to tell you, there's something you got to do. You got to purge the bad out. Amen. Yeah. Out with the bad, in with the good. Amen. Right. We got to get it out. We got we to gotta confess it. And listen, this is where you really don't want to hear me tonight. We got to come to the Lord and we got to say, Lord, it's me. It's me. It's not my wife. It's not my husband. It's not my, uh, my brother or my sister. It's not, it's not anybody in my family. It's not my in-laws. not my outlaw. Lord, it's me in need of prayer tonight. Right. It's me. That don't have the vertical in the right place. It's me, God. Please, please hear my prayer. Oh, my goodness. I became the king of blaming my wife for everything wrong in my life. She just wouldn't get with the program. I've never seen such a stubborn woman. Everything that I, everything that I wanted to do. If it didn't go right, I said, oh, she just wouldn't go along with it. She's got me, she put the bad mouth on me. 
It's her fault. God taught me what a low life man that is. That's right. Amen. I said, son, have I, this is what I heard the Lord say, how many times have I blamed you? Every time. <laughs> Every time. Ah, he's never put blame on me. That's right. That's right. He's never put blame on me. He loves me as his own. And every time I fail him, instead of him pointing a finger at me, he lifts me back up again. That's right. Thank and he draws me in. Sure. He always treats me. Do you know that Jesus never treats me in any other way other than out of great love? That's right. Every time. No matter how bad you go astray, listen to me, believers. No matter how bad you fail him, he always treats you. You say, Well, I got a whooping. That's because he loves you. That's right. If, you, if he took you to the woodshed, it's cause. He loves you. He even told you. He says he only beats those that he loves. Right. Right. He only that says chasing. I know it don't say beat. I was using the buddy version, not, but uh, he chastises those that he loves. And and so the 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 essence of of where we got to go in order to be filled with the good is first we must confess the evil. There's two, two individuals, I want to say that, let's call them two saved people that we see in these scriptures who are trying to follow Jesus. And he says, look, you're not fooling anybody because I can tell by what's oozing out of you if you're walking according to my word or not. So the, the issue is, is that he says, that what's the abundance, what's an overflow inside of your heart will come out of you in a time when you, when you can't turn the filter on quick enough to catch it. Hmm. What you look at me for? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Brother Frank. The altars are open, but anyone. Yeah, you might want to. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Frank said, what you looking at me for? <laughs> Oh, brother. Hey, listen, it's the truth, is it not? It's the absolute truth. So we got it in us. How much of the world have we allowed to accumulate? Amen. It grows up it too much, right? It grows. Brother Dave, we get to the place where we can't hardly recognize the difference between true believers and unbelievers because there's believers who are walking like unbelievers. Amen. We're filled with the same stuff. It sloshes in us. And then when we get mashed, we react the same way they do, and the same stuff comes out. And everybody goes like, I thought you was a Christian. Well, just because I'm a church going, man, don't mean I can't curse every now and then. It was waiting for an opportunity. Yeah. It was swolled up in you. It had been going around. Listen, uh, when you fall to that immoral act, you don't, guys, don't leave. Every man, don't look, look, look at me. Don't look down for a second. We'll pray later. Ain't time to pray right now. Every time you commit an immoral act, yeah. Or have an immoral thought. Yeah. It didn't just happen. Yes, that thing been right. swirling around in there for a while. Yes, You've been entertaining that idea. You don't like to admit that, but it's the truth. Yes, you, didn't, you didn't cast it out when you had the opportunity. And it swells in there enough till when somebody, somebody pushes that button, you will act on it if you're not careful. That's right. You know, if, if you got a, some type of an addiction, we'll talk about your, your problem now. <laughs> Talked about mine. If you got that problem, you listen, if you don't let that thing go and get that thing in the, under the blood of Christ and trust Him with it and get it out of you, you think, you think that it's just you being you. But you have not emptied yourself so that you can be filled with the goodness. You still cling to the wickedness. And you like to call it good as long as you don't manifest to it. But every now and then you manifest to it and you say, well, I just slip every now and then. Well, the reason you're slipping is because you didn't turn it over to Christ. Amen. That's just the truth. I love you and you know I do. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, a tree's going to be known by its fruit. He says, as we just talked about, men don't gather grapes of brambles and, or thistles, and he don't, they don't gather figs of thorns. Uh, he says, uh, a man's, out of the abundance of his heart a man speaks. 
If he's got an abundance of good, he speaks good. If he's abundance of evil, he speaks evil. The verses right after that is where I want to look right now. As we go down to verse number 46, I guess it was, the next thing he says, this is the reason I said I believe he's talking to saved people tonight. What does he say? The, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Right? And then he goes into the parable of the two foundations of the house. Right? One house built on sand, one house built on the rock. Now, I'm, I'm going to wrap up in just a second because I think you're getting me, whether you want to or not. You understand where I'm coming from. Whether you'll receive it or not is your choice. And whether you'll take it, but i, I got to tell you, I believe you're getting me tonight. Um, uh, uh, what I did, this, this is all the notes I had. I had the verse, and all I wrote, I wrote a couple of definitions up here, and then right here, the only statement I wrote down tonight was, it is what it is. You know the old saying, if it waddles and quacks, there must be a duck. It's a shoe. Right? It's a shoe. <laughs> it's the truth. Uh, it, it is what it is. As we, we covered up, uh, my daddy used to say you could take a pig in, put him in the bathtub, right. wash him up, amen, put lipstick on him. <laughs> powder him down, put bows in his hair, you know, per perfume on him, I brush his hair and, and, and dry him off, and if you let go of him, he'll run out that front door, find the very first mud hole he can find, That's right. and waller in it again. Why? It's in the nature of him. He is a pig. That's what pigs do. It is what it is. You might try to make it look like a poodle dog, but it's a pig. That's all you can do. And so, whenever you dress up the outside of the individual, and you try to contain, uh, I used to think of this, um, the idea that uh, a chicken killing bulldog, a, a bulldog that's bad about eating up chickens, I mean, you can re restrain that bulldog. You can put him on a runner, or you can put him in a pen, but you really haven't changed that bulldog. Nope. You let a chicken get close enough, yep. or you let him out for just a minute. To take a little stroll. I ain't going nowhere, boss. I'm just let him take a little stroll for a minute. If he happens to smell a chicken a block away, you won't catch him before he's killed that. Why? It's in his nature. Right. That's what he is. And every time you find yourself slipping to sin, you and I like to make excuses for ourselves. Jesus said, "The real truth is, it's in you. Yeah, it's in you." He said, this is what you need to do. You need to take, I, I, I've never, never taught this before. I believe this is what Jesus said to do. You need to take it all the way down to the foundation. Amen. Quit trying to build the house until you've established. You can't. There you go. There you go. You can't. Quit trying to build the house. Quit trying to put the curtains in order. Quit trying to paint the eaves. Quit trying to make it sparkle. Quit putting in the shrubbery. Quit doing all the showy stuff until you've gone and worked on the foundation. Get the foundation right. Come on. Work on the foundation. Establish that relationship. Now you can start your building. These verses are not just thrown in arbitrarily on top of each other. I believe Jesus had a very succinct order in how they came together. And he says to his followers, listen, this road, listen, this, this Christian walk is not going to be easy for you if you don't put the old man to death. That's why churches are struggling today. That's why they have fisticuffs in, in, in the pews. My, my pastor friend was telling me they have had arguments and fights. He said, I'm telling you, it's the, he said, it's the saddest thing I've ever been in the middle of. He, it, there's arguments and fights all the time. There is a, di there's a dissension in the body of believers, so-called, if you will. I don't know about their salvation, but those that claim to be saved, there's a dissension. Some of them can't stand to sit in the same building with somebody else. And that these things ought not to be. We told you just this past weekend that Paul said, are you not carnal? There's strifes and envy and seditions among you. There's all kind of struggling. And aren't the, are not ye carnal? Amen. 
You act like this, you want to fuss and fight and then think that it's okay? It's not okay. What part of being a new creature don't we get? What part of being filled with the Spirit don't we get? What part of putting the old man to death and living a new life that exemplifies our Savior and His attributes and not mine? Listen, if all we wanted to do was come together and have meetings with a good number of people, all we'd have to do is pull that grill out, bring it up to the fellowship hall, have Gary on staff every weekend to be cooking ribs, pork butts, chicken. Hey, man, we could pack them in. Let's do bingo one night, do poker the next. I, you could have dances and you could have contests. We could have shows. We could do old car shows. We could do new car shows. We could do no car shows. We could, we could have bicycles. They wouldn't care. Come to see somebody swallow a goldfish. You know you've heard of that stuff. See who can eat the most hot dogs. You ain't got a chance there. I got you. But <laughs> you could build on shifting sand yeah. a life and a false pretense of a relationship with Christ that will not stand when the storms come and beat against it. You know the rest of that parable about the foundations? Both houses says when the storms came, Bless your heart, storms will come. Amen. TJ, storms will come in your life. James. Brother Mark, storms will come in your life. Went through a stroke. Amen. Uh, uh, Miss Vanessa's been through some cancer. Wayne, you've been through some stuff. Guys, you've been through some stuff. Storms will come. You've been on the operating table, I know. Storms will come. And, and yes, God is there, but it won't matter if your foundation is not based on Him. You must be filled, you must be filled with His, you must go back to the basic fundamentals and start the building through your relationship and then build the building. Work on it. I'm not telling you not to. All the other stuff that we have been putting on, we have been doiling up the residents. We, we are the temple of God and we have covered it to make it look good. You know how it is. You'll pull off the old clothes and put on the new clothes and put on the best smelling good. I got one jar of smelling good. You know how I got. I got one jar. My, my daughter-in-law, she makes fun of my smelling good. I got one jar of smelling good and that's for just church. I use the other cheap stuff for every other day of the week. When it's time to go to church, I use the good cheap stuff. Okay. Right? <laughs> because that, we, we, doll, we doll it up. We want it to look the best. Man, we come in. We, we will, I saw Buddy Coon this past Sunday look like a preacher man. Amen. He really did. I, I, he, I'm not making fun of that. I'm telling you, he honestly looked I, he looked glorified, and I, and I was going like, man, that dude looks good. And, and but the, we put on those things, and those there's nothing wrong with those things if they're built on a solid foundation. But bla I'm telling you right now, it don't matter what the roof is like if the walls are going to crumble, then the roof's going to end up where the floor is. So we got to have a good foundation. Can't have no cracks in it, baby. <laughs> Not no real cracks anyway. It's got to be a solid foundation if we're going to build. I urge you tonight, consider what the Lord has said. Verse 45 to close out. A good man, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart. When I, re when I read that word treasure, I went to look that up. That's one of the definitions I don't think I told you about, but maybe I did. Uh, it means a deposited wealth. A deposited wealth, an overflow because it says on, in the end of that verse, the, the abundance, whatever is out, outflowing. But when it talks about the, there's good treasure and there's an evil treasure. Now the treasure has a twofold meaning to me. It's a deposited wealth. It's something that has been put into you. But a treasure to me always has a connotation of something that I value. Right? 
I, I, like my wife, treasures that red Tahoe that she came across. She has great, she likes that. She's, it's great value to her. She loves it. Um, uh, you might have something that holds a tremendous value to you because of, it may not be worth anything monetarily, money-wise, but somebody may have gave it to you and sentimentally it may have great value to you. It becomes a treasure, right? Amen. So a treasure is something that you esteem highly. That you lift up. So this verse says that a good man has treasure, but an evil man also has treasure. They both esteem value to those things that they have filled their treasure chest with. That's the problem. We got to empty the evil. I told you I was going to read it one more time, and I'll quit. I will. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. And they just can't do any different because that's what's in you. It is what it is. For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, his mouth speaketh. And tonight. I pray that God has spoken to you. I know you, you may get tired of hearing this preacher. Every day it seems like God's given me something to talk to us about how we can lay it down and walk a little closer. And you might be thinking, Brother Buddy, I'm tired of hearing that. I come to hear something. To... Listen to me. This church ain't here just to fill up a piece of property. Amen. God's called us to try to bring people not only into the family of God, but to get them to walking after God. That's my goal, and I'm gonna I'll preach it till I'm talking to nothing but that door back there if I have to. Bring, bring it to Jesus. Search your heart. Say, God, search me and see if there be any unclean thing in me, and heal me. Lord, let me deliver me from that issue. Let me, let me have it. Amen. No. Y'all good. See, y'all, 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 y'all giving me verses and y'all bringing it back. You know what it is. Why do we have such trouble doing it? We are so carnal. We're so carnal. Yeah, and we want to use that as a crutch or an excuse. And Paul said, "I tell you what to do with that human nature. Put it to death. Put it to death. Sacrifice it. Give it up." You know where it leads you to. If it was any good, why didn't you stay there? Uh -huh. Right? If, if it was good, why didn't you stay with the one that brought you to the dance? But you knew it was no good. You had, you must let it go because you knew you'd not make it without Jesus. Surrender that life today. Fathers, I bow before you. I want to thank you for the opportunity that we've had tonight. Lord, I, uh, I ask your mercy and grace upon those spoken word. I pray, Lord, that this word will penetrate the hearts of every one of us here tonight. Lord, I know some folks that are that show themselves to be good on the outside, but they're filled with venom. Uh, Jesus gave that accusation to the Pharisees. He said, you, you look good on the outside, you're like whitewashed tombs, sepulchers, but you're full of dead men's bones and you stink on the inside. Lord, they were very religious, very orderly, maybe very moral individuals. But Lord, they weren't following after the, uh, the commandments of the Lord and seeking for His Spirit to lead them and guide them. I pray, Lord, we will set aside everything that we have ever strove for in this world. Call it nothing but waste that we might know Jesus Christ and walk in your ways. Lord, I'm going to ask this prayer tonight, and I pray everybody in here desires this for their life. And those that do, I pray they will claim it and walk by it. Lord, tomorrow help me to walk a little closer. Tomorrow help me to walk a little closer. Help me to empty some of the evil, and Lord, let me be filled with more good. And I pray, God, every day after that, I pray I'll be able to walk just a little closer yet than I did the day before. And Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Do not forget our gospel sing Friday night. The storm should come tomorrow, pass through and be gone. And uh, we should have uh, the Butler brothers with us Friday night, 730. There's no refreshments, but I believe you're going to be in for a grand time. So come and join us at 730. May God bless you.